Okay, okay, we are back with some more Ethel Kane, dude. Inbred. Um, I know raisins can go in bread. Uh, I don't know what else. Nuts? You put nuts in bread. Anyways, let's check it out. I know it's in bread. I know I'm kidding. It's, just, it's a really bad joke. Produced by Ethel as well. This should be heat. I love ambience and music like this. The visualizer looks terrifying. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Ethel actually explained these lyrics herself, right? Yeah. Describing a young girl with not much to her name at all, with barely any clothes even. Okay. What about this? Is this the cannibal dude? A young girl with only her older brother to care for her. She watches him at all times, even when he thinks she isn't. Uh, she gets what little comfort she has from him, depending on him for everything, right down to the warmth when it's cold. Sucking on the back of his leg. It's wild because the vocals are so light and pretty, but like the lyric here, dude. I don't want to read ahead. I don't want to read ahead. Okay, this kind of reminds me of Demon Slayer. I don't know if you guys watch Demon Slayer, um, but the the brother sister demon, uh, the, the, you know, I, I kind of reminds me. I don't want to spoil it because it's a really good anime, dude. Kind of reminds me of that though. And then this dude, something smells rotten. You know what it is? Her older brother's child, but he takes care of her. So anyone who tries to hurt her should be aware of him. Everyone thinks he's a bad person, but she swears differently. Right. The mother is barely in the picture, not available physically or emotionally. It's causing damage to the family, damage which grows over time. She theorizes that she theorizes they may be beyond saving. Damn, dude. That's when you just turn into a demon. It works, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Oh shit. Damn. Okay. Is there a little bit of auto tune on the ending there? Because it sounded like a little bit of warping. Might be. Very ethereal though, dude. The guitar is kind of like teasing a little bit. The guitar is teasing a little bit. I know Ethel can cook on that, dude. And I, I would love to hear it go crazy, dude. Uh, 
she accepts that some people are dealt bad cards in life and just waits for it to be over. That's crazy. But even that's the thing I always thought, you know, some people just dealt different cards in poker, you know, in poker, if you know what poker is. Um, but any hand can be a good hand until you see the flop. You know what I mean? You can have like a, like a one and like a three, you know what I mean? And it's like, or an ace in it. No, that's too good. Like a two and a four, you know, like, uh, what are these cards you fold? A two and a four can be great if the flop lets you have a, a fucking, uh, what's it called again? The, the five in a row. Not, it's not a full house. What is that? A straight. You might get a straight with the flop. You never know, dude. I don't know. I feel like, I, I remember hearing someone talk about that in a different way. And I was like, oh, I never thought of it like that. And yeah, any cards can be good cards if you know how to play them. Be, be, be uh, optimistic. She's passive in the abuse. Uh, she experienced it from others. Just letting them do what they want until she's physically sick from it. That's not good. That is not good at all. Who will take the fall? Who of us is stronger? She asked the one in power if he'll admit his abuse or if he'll deny it and she'll just continue to bear it. Jesus. Regardless, he can't help himself. Maybe it was always going to turn out this way. From the beginning, everyone knew something was wrong with him. Is her own brother... This is all fictional stories, but is the brother in the story the one doing the abuse? Yikers. Okay, up, up. All right, let's keep going. I hope the guitar goes crazy, dude. It's so haunting. Wait, 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 wait. Did the drums have a reverse come in? I think it did. The kick was reversed. You never hear a reverse kick into the kick. That's crazy. Huh. <laughs> the background vocals. Fuck yourself. God damn. Okay. The dissonance in those drums. Oh shit! Oh my god! Yeah, it went crazy. That shit went crazy. Okay, dude. Okay, is that... There's, there's four seconds. Okay, the wind blowing away the ashes of humanity. Um, <clears throat> He prefers impressionable young woman... Okay. I don't know if I want to read that. Um, She assures him her older brother knows... Her older brother knows and hates him for it, and he'll get what's coming to him eventually. Okay, so it's the father. Where was I? Did I just skip everything? No. Because that's some... We, oh, yeah, okay, it's the chorus. We already read that. Okay, okay. Oh, we already read that as well. Okay. <laughs> that if her brother can ever catch a break from his own plagues, he'll punish the man. Okay. So their father's a piece of poop. This was fire, dude. The production is always very interesting. The way it evolves, um, the drums that came in towards the end. I did want the guitar to be in there some more, but the drums were there, and they were pretty like 
I feel like it was some dissonance. There wasn't like distorted, but the frequencies had like a harshness to them, uh, which adds to that haunting feeling. But we got a little bit of guitar towards the end and those vocals taking it higher, dude. I like that. Um, <clears throat> Set of the song in the Rising interview with Pitchfork. When I was writing it, I had all this stuff running through my head about different times that people in my life failed me or did things they weren't supposed to, and I was angry. I was like, you put me in this place that I'm going to have to spend the rest of my life trying to get out of, and I don't know if I ever will. Uh, describes a toxic and sometimes violent relationship between two siblings. The eldest brother of the siblings is a social outcast and menace who seems to have a fondness of the narrator despite being somewhat of a pariah to the public and is very protective. Pariah? I don't know what a pariah means. And a piranha. But that's not that. That's different. <laughs> Song's beautiful, but wow, you can't play it around around it other people. <laughs> that's funny. This might be my fave from this album. One of the most nauseating and heartbreaking songs I've ever heard. Unreal. Um, best album ever made. Period. T period. Go I was gonna say ghost bumps. <laughs> Goosebumps all the way. That was something else. This song makes me feel supernatural. Peanut butter and jelly because they're in bread. You don't put peanut butter and jelly in bread. You put it on bread, which is a different form of bread, I guess. I don't know what I'm talking about. That was fire though, man. I enjoyed that. I, lo I love that she does all of her own production as well. Because like that's, that's skills, dude. That's skills, dude. Musical talent, not just one thing or the other. And you get people to do it for you. It's the entire project. One person. Like, that's very impressive, dude. It, it got dark. It got dark. This track was a little bit dark, but it was still hauntingly beautiful, if you know what I mean. Like, those vocals are really, really nice. And just the layering of the instrumentals at the right times. Like, it just felt really well made. I like it. Keep or delete, man. Keep. What someone said, though, it's like, you, you can't really play this around people. You're going to give me the aux cord. And you plug it. <laughs> this one isn't as bad as some other tracks out there. There's some other tracks that are, like, way more, like, dark. Uh, and I know Ethel has some other dark stuff, too. But, uh, yeah, I get that aspect of it. But it is nice to listen to when it's just you. Keep it really, man. Keep. Uh, what will I rate this? I'll go, like, in solid 8-8. Eight, eight. I feel a solid 8-8 eight, eight for this. The production was top tier. Uh, and she when she took it higher at the end there at the vocals, loved it, man. 8-8 eight, eight for me, man.